What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nick Burnett, and I'm bringing you guys a little bit of a tips and tutorials and what makes the difference between a bad player and a good player in Fortnite because there is some obvious points and uh, it's just something to talk about when it goes to like what is the difference between a bad and a good player. So first off, let's start what a bad player does a lot and what a bad player should focus and uh, if you do some of this stuff, maybe because I do a lot of this stuff myself, I kind of mess up a little bit. I'm not as good as building in the middle of a combat, so it's something that I need to prove on. So if you find yourself in anybody, like if you find yourself in any of these points in here, uh, you can definitely try and improve because there's always room for improvement when it goes to gaming and just Fortnite in general. So let's start with what a bad player does a lot compared to what a good player does. A bad player always picks up a weapon that is the rarest. So you have a blue M16 and you find a yellow scar. The guy would immediately pick up the yellow scar instead of the M16, but he doesn't know the difference between an M16 and a scar and why people actually use M16s and people actually use scars. So there's two difference between the scar, or there's a huge difference between a scar and an M16. The scar has more damage than the M16, but it's less reliable on longer ranges. But you can still kill people at long ranges with it, it just has a bigger bloom and a little bit more unstable than the M16. The M16 has less damage, but it's more stable than the scar. But you can also move around with it a lot more, uh, which makes for a perfect rushing weapon. You can just jump around with it, strafe with it. So it's just a lot more better to use on the move. So either use both of these weapons or an M16 or SCAR, you should really just pick up what is onto your playstyle and not just pick on, uh, pick up a weapon that's just like, oh yeah, this weapon's more rare and it's a better color than this weapon, let's pick up this. So, another thing that a bad player does is that he uses a lot of time managing his resources, he's always trying to get more resources. This is not something that's necessarily bad, but it's not something that's necessarily good. The time that you're using, like chopping down trees, chopping rocks and so on, you can use in getting loot or killing players. Uh, to get loot, there's a lot of different ways to get loot in the game, and I don't think it's a good thing to waste your time on just getting loot on resources and so on, like just chopping down trees and woods and you know buildings and so on, because it doesn't really help you out in the long run. Of course, it's always good to have a lot of materials, but this is something that I see a lot of people are wasting their time on, and uh, it's easy to get killed when you do stuff like this. So yeah. Another thing that a bad player does is that they actually run around and see people. When they see people, they try and avoid the gunfight. And I'm not necessarily calling people bad that does this, but if you want to be good at the game, you always need to kind of improve your aim and get better at rushing people and get better like in just gunfights and everything. So a good player, like in my opinion, would also run out and just try and get in as many gunfights as possible. But a bad player would kind of try and avoid it. I'm not saying that you're bad if you do it, because there's you can definitely win a game with two kills. You don't need ten kills to win a game, but. I'm just saying you should challenge yourself with trying to kill in more and more people. That way we get better aim and you just get to know the weapons a lot better and so on. Another big mistake that people really, really do when they're new to the game and I myself did this mistake a lot and I see a lot of people still do this mistake. They build too big base, like if you build a big base, it's too big for you to keep control over. Uh, you can't keep like everything safe in it. You can't just look over all the places. Building a one by one is pretty much the easiest to do, or two by two, and uh, where to build a base. You shouldn't just build a base where the point is really low and there's like a huge, like, a lot of hills around it, because then people can just go up top of the hills and shoot you when you're down in the in your base. So try to always have your base on a high location on a hill, on top of a building. This stuff like that always help you out a lot. So that's like what I can think about what the bad players do or new players in my opinion. So let's head over to what the good players do. As I said, the good players always know which weapons is the best. So I know I covered the SCAR and the M16 just there, but let's look at the snap rifles. You have the bolt actions, you have the blue, the purple, and the yellow one. Um, the blue snap rifle just got enough damage to kill a guy with full shield if you hit him in the head. Um, the yellow snap rifle will actually do 195 damage if you hit him in the upper torso, so he has 5 health left. So you don't need to hit a headshot with the uh, yellow snap rifle. But what's the real difference and what really differentiates the players from using the blue snap rifle and not the uh, yellow one is that the yellow one has less drop off and it has less recoil in some way, like it reloads a little bit faster and uh, the bullet doesn't have as much bullet drop as the yellow one. So it's more accurate than the yellow one. So if you're good to hitting heads with it and getting headshots, it's not really a big difference between just using the blue one or the yellow one. The yellow one is more powerful, but it doesn't have the same accuracy as the blue one. 
Um, other thing that I'm talking about, like as I said, like there's a lot of bad players go and just get resources a lot. A good player will actually get resources. He will always try and pick up like to find an ammo box, for example. Uh, he will just like he would do not think about getting an ammo box. He just get it. It's just in his system and so on. Uh, he's getting resources like. Uh, from killing people and it's getting resources from just running around the looting houses like you can loot efficiently without wasting time That is something that a lot of players don't do but good players manage to do this on a really really fast pace And this is how you get into the late game really quick and you don't need to actually worry about looting people in the mid game um, So that's just something to think about always try and manage your time when you're getting resources and so on and the last point that I'm, or two last points that I have to talk about is that a good player is always trying to challenge other players uh, if you can. Like if this guy's obviously got a better base and you can't really push into this base, you shouldn't do it. It's just a death run to be honest. But as I'm saying, if you see a guy that's running in the open, try and challenge him. Like they will challenge him. Like a good player will actually challenge a guy like that and try killing him either from long range or just chasing that guy to try to improve his aim or get a lot more kills to actually get a better score. Uh, and so on, getting on this leaderboard a lot better, getting more kills, getting more points, more XP, and so on. So good player was always go around pushing people, trying to kill as many people as possible. But he also knows when he can't push like people. I push squads. When I play squads, I can push a whole squad by myself. Sometimes I manage to push this pull this off really really well. And sometimes it's not really worth it. I lose all my shield and some health and then I'm just on 75 health the rest of the game. It's not really worth it. But at least I managed to kill him and that's one less squad to care about. It really depends what the squad is. If the squad is in a really good spot, you should kill him because they can get the advantage of you. If they're just in the middle of the open, you should definitely kill him. Um, just because it leaves less people on the game and you get more XP, more points, you get better overall in the game. A good player always knows where to build his base and what materials to use. If I'm like, if I'm playing and I just need a, like just a base to have a base because I just want to get my bearings in, I usually build it out of wood. I don't waste the valuable uh, materials like iron or metal or like stone and so on. I don't really use those a lot. I use them like in really really late game. I don't use them in the mid game. If somebody's shooting me and I need to, need to build something really quick, I always build wood because uh, it doesn't really matter because they would just shoot it down. So it doesn't matter if you build wood, stone or metal. So it doesn't really matter what you build. You should just try and get cover up really really quick and just try and find some cover because most people just shoot down the cover and they just try to aim aim on you through the wall so that, like when the cover goes down they get one bullet at you and then you build another one then the, the cycle discontinues so it doesn't really help you a lot so when you build try to get behind covers that's something that always good players does so i hope you guys find this uh, little of a video interesting to see some difference between a bad player and a good player i know it's kind of not messy but it's kind of it's kind of hard differentiation between a good player and a bad player there is a huge learning curve when it goes to Fortnite. Like everybody can play Fortnite, it's not really high skill plays game, but to get really good in the game, it takes a lot of skill and effort to put into the game. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really, really helps me out. And I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Take care.